everyone this is Scrap Computer here. This video is going to cover what you should do when you take the top or bot lane turret during the laning phase. This is a massive question that comes with many variables but is simple at its base. I got this question on stream I thought it would be a fantastic video opportunity to clear this up as many players just seemed oblivious to know what to do after they got that bot lane or top lane turret. So let's get into it. I'll be covering bot and top lane in the same guide as they're exactly the same but for just simplicity's sake and just for these examples I'll be covering bot lane predominantly. So when you take the turret you have two possible decisions, I'll cover the decision, then when to do it and all of their considerations after in the next section then I'll explain why to do these things. So how it all works then why to do it. Let's get into it. Staying in lane. Staying in lane and maintaining pressure is a fantastic method to continue the siege and not allow your enemy bot lane here clearly losing a single second of breathing room. If you got the first turret, you're 99% of the time in a win condition. This means you'll be able to take the second turret just as you took the first. Remaining in lane and continuously applying pressure to a losing lane and sieging the second tier can be a good power play and a fantastic demoralizing tool. Staying in lane generates crap tons of pressure for the bot lane, but more importantly the jungler and mid laner on the enemy team to gank the overextended lane, you. If you push bot you will generate so much pressure it will force the entire enemy team to you, which of course will give your team a lot of breathing room if they're ever behind or even ahead to push other turrets and do other things. When the enemy team come to your bot lane, your jungler on top and even mid in most cases have free space to do basically anything they want, siege up mid, maybe even just head up top lane, go for a gank, steal some of the enemy jungle, you can generate a lot of pressure and waste a lot of the enemy team's time if you're playing it correctly, but I'll cover that now. Now to do this you want to take a couple of things into consideration, all of which I'll cover. Number one, you're vulnerable to ganks. Look at the map below, as you can see we're way over the halfway mark, we're way in the red zone and of course this leaves us vulnerable to jungle ganks and mid lane roams as well. This is the main drawback of this tactic and the reason why most players won't attempt to remain in lane and push the second tier. Just look how deep you are with no fallback to your turret. Early slash mid game this can easily lead to a 4 man roam and a double kill for the enemy team and a dragon since you're dead. But there's ways of countering this. Number 2, Ward Up. When sieging the second tier, we are vulnerable to ganks as I've mentioned, but this can be countered, all you have to do is ward. I get a lot of people telling me I never siege second tier, it's too risky, ward. When sieging second tier or even thinking about sieging it, before you even start pushing the lane, run up there, get a couple of wards done on the spots seen below on the map. Ward the river, mid bush, and this will spot the mid laner roaming early if they come through the river, which they have to, or if they decide to go around the long way, the second ward as seen below is in the blue buff bush to spot any jungler or mid coming from that camp. As you can see it is nearly complete cover of the map. There is no way to approach the bot lane with this without them seeing it unless you go through your jungle which again most people aren't going to do since that will be like a, what, a minute wasted time. This tactic is great but you have to ward. So when you're the top laner, ward here, as seen below, this is a different example for the top. As you can see in the diagram, we have to put three wards to completely cover the top side. For this diagram flip, uh, if you're on the red side bot. Number three, keep an eye on the map. Now this is the main one, a lot of people do ward, but at the end of the day, they don't even keep an eye out for it. When staging this deep, you'll be getting ganked 100%. It's a guarantee, you just have to wait for it, but this is a good thing. You'll be forcing the jungler and the mid to waste time trying to gank you. If you're safe and you've got wards, they'll come to gank you. They're gonna waste lots of time. And of course, the bot lane are gonna get very frustrated at the mid, the mid's gonna get frustrated at the jungler. They're all gonna get extremely annoyed if they can't get to you. If you're reacting and keeping and on that map your support should have their eyes glued on that map for any movement and you have to run away very early do not get caught up with this tactic or it'll fall flat in its ass so keep an eye on the map as soon as the mid lane steps out of lane run back immediately like the, where else are they going if the mid lanes push up the lane where are they going they're coming for you just run immediately wards are great but still keeping an eye on the map for rotations is extremely important and just using them appropriately i'm sorry i had to mention that but this is really important i see a lot of people getting tunnel visioned on the second tier this is an issue Number four, don't get baited in. Now this is the most common reason to why this tactic falls. Now this tactic fails because of a lot of players get drawn in and don't notice the mid and jungler coming behind them. So if you've taken the first tier, you're probably in the win condition as I've mentioned. This means you're gonna be able to beat the enemy bot lane. Of course, it's simple enough. 
But there's an issue with this. You can beat them, you know that, but you're vulnerable to ganks. If you're sieging deep, you can kill your enemy and take the turret, but ensure you do this quickly in a four second fight or chip them down slowly. Basically, never go for a risky all in. You're gonna be able to beat your enemy bot lane, but in this example, you have to wilt them down and all in them in four seconds. If you can't finish them off in four seconds, don't go for the fight because that's enough time for the enemy mid and of course jungler to come in for you. Do not get baited in, chip them down and focus on the turret objective and demoralizing them and zoning them out as much as you can. Overall, this tactic generates pressure that will alleviate the rest of your team and demoralize the enemy. It can also be used to st stick on that second tier as well if your enemies don't react and ensure the enemy bot lane or top lane never get free farm ever. And that's it for staying lane. Next possible decision. Rotate to mid. Now this is a lot more far common tactic for mainly bot lane. Top lane predominantly just keeps on pressuring top, forcing pressure up there so mid lane can do their thing. After you've taken the enemy turret, you can roam to the mid lane to stack pressure on it and take the turret. This ensures you're spreading out your strength and trying to perpetuate a lead in terms of objective and global gold for your team. Any good siege laner will do this. When you stack mid, the enemy mid will have to get some help or lose the turret. This tactic is less risky than sitting in lane, which can feel, but I'll cover in this now with the considerations. Number 1. The enemy mid has wave clear. Now this is actually the main concern that will affect the rest of all of my points. If the enemy mid has good wave clear, you'll be stalled for mid for at least 2-5 to five minutes if they don't get any help at all. This can be enough for the enemy team to take bot or top or even just all come mid. An enemy mid will have, with good wave clear can literally make or break this tactic. This is the reason why I, I take a crap on champions like Fizz and I just don't like them. Why? What would you do? What would a Fizz do versus a 3-4 to four man siege? Nothing can't do anything. How can you wave clear? They'll kill you. Regardless, keep this risk of the enemy mid having wave clear in mind. If they have wave clear, they can stall you. This, again, I'm going to explain this more in detail for the next points. I just wanted to keep that in mind. They can stall you. Number two, you'll get less farm and experience. So, when you rotate mid, you'll be getting less farm and experience. You have to share the gold with the mid laner and the experience with yourself, the support and the mid. If you can't get that turret quickly, the amount of experience and gold you'll lose will be substantial and can actually cost you your lead. Now, if you think of point one, we see an issue here, right? So if the enemy mid has wave clear, if you're stalled for long enough, we're going to be winged out of farm and experience and will fall off heavily as, well, our support, mid laner and AD carry are all going to lose out in gold and experience. Whereas the enemy team are still getting lots of gold, getting experience, constantly getting stronger. You're going to wing yourself out. This is the reason why I generally don't advise rotating mid if the enemy mid has very good wave clear. Number 3, bot lane turret is vulnerable. During the time you're sieging mid, if the enemy AD carry is pushing towards the turret heavily, you have a limited time to take the mid before your bot lane turret is gone and you're simply switching up objectives and then the AD carry comes back to mid to make it an equal fight. You have to take the turret quickly or the enemy AD carry will get your turret for free and then come mid. You have around 60 to 120 seconds to take the turret or this will happen. Once again, if you can't take it in this time, you're going to lose. This is why high level play generally has a lot of wave clear mid laners. Number 4. Force the enemy bot mid lane. So most of the time the enemy bot will come mid to defend the turret. This is actually a high level pressure play, although on the surface it seems quite simplistic. Forcing the enemy mid when you've taken the bottom leaves your bottom turret safe. Basically, the amount of pressure you apply mid forces the bot to come mid lane. This is the best way of defending your turret without defending your turret. But this is all predecessed pre on the fact that you have to take bot lane to do this. Another thing is that they could send the support up, you can't push heavily in most cases, to support mid and the jungler to hold the pressure mid while the AD carry split spot, hoping the mid can be held for long enough. This is a substantial reason in the LCS why we see so many wave clear champions hold the mid. But I digress, I'm meaning to make a pressure guide soon that covers this, covers this a lot better, I'm going just over the basic surface. But I just wanted to point out that you can force your enemy bot mid lane if you have enough pressure. This goes in your favour as the enemy turret, um, well, is going to be left during the laning phase because they can't go down to take it while you're sieging mid. They've got to respond to the pressure. And that's it for the rotate to mid section. So now we know what to do, but how do we decide when to do it? I'll cover this in the next two sections. When to stay in lane. Number one, the enemy mid has wave clear. 
I've already mentioned this. If the enemy mid has massive wave clear, you want to avoid going mid lane as you'll get stalled and have trouble taking the objective in general. If your enemy mid has good wave clear, I avoid going there. Although going mid is still possible, it's a crap ton harder and can be risky because you're going to lose an experience and gold and bot lane can just take down their turret. You have to do a quick and versus a wave clear, that's not going to happen. Most wave clear champions are poor roamers for the most part, which means I have an easier time sieging my lane. Number two, and this is the big one for the top laners out there, you're a kill lane. When you're playing Greaves, Lucian, Raven, Riven, someone, uh, Rennington, someone who's got huge amounts of pressure, you can just stay in lane and perpetuate their lead and just keep on crippling the guy down. Leaving lane gives them free farm when you go mid. If you just want to keep on punishing that one player, it's generally better. Top lane for the most part will do this tactic because they're a benefactory of it. Basically top lane going mid uh, is just not going to help. Most top laners really can't siege that well. This is why most top laners should split basically. So basically, if you're a kill lane, you specialize in perpetuating a lead and killing your, uh, your enemies and not sieging objectives. For this point, when playing these champions, I'm far less likely to go mid and siege up. I like staying on my lane and ensuring my kill lane stays as long as possible. Kill lane. These guys are strongest during the laning phase, so try and extend it by not roaming. Stay in your lane, kill the bot, then siege the bot lane, rather than going mid. If you're a kill lane and you got the bot lane turret, you're winning heavily. This means even if the jungler mid come down for you, you might even be able to kill them. Or if they come up for you for the top lane, just the jungler, you might be able to kill both of them if you're this far ahead. So this is why staying in lane is a very viable tactic where everyone just seems to ignore. I still think it's quite it's simplistic but strong. Stay in your lane and kill the lane, then siege rather than going mid and only sieging. Like, how well can a Riven Siege? Not so much. How well can a Raven Siege? Not very well. You specialize in killing, so try and perpetuate it. Generally in kill lanes, this is better. This is a big point you should hold on to, especially, especially the top laners that cannot siege at all. Number three, you're aiming for late game. With your Vayne, Tristana, Blue Ezreal, you may want to just farm in the lane and just keep pressure bot and not push. Hold the lane and fight your enemy if they get close enough. If Vayne's ahead, this is the best way of getting her to late game. I don't advise this as you're not taking objectives or pressing your lead heavily, but it is possible if you want to keep it very safe and the rest of your team aren't doing well. Another decision, when to rotate to mid. Number one, the enemy mid has not got wave clear. If the enemy mid has little or no wave clear, you should 100%, absolutely 100%, as soon as you get that bot lane turret, go mid. They cannot defend this objective. No question, no other thoughts, go mid. I don't care if you're a kill lane, I don't care who you are, try to go down there. If you, if you go mid and take the turret, you'll be able to do this easily. Mid laners without wave clear are extremely susceptible to being sieged and having their turrets taken heavily. If there's only a meh wave clear champion, you can also take heavy advantage of this and of course siege the mid and take the turret. This is literally one of the only hard rules I can apply. This is a problem with your Yasuo's, your Fizz's, anyone that hasn't got much range wave clear, you're going to have a lot of issues. If you can't wave clear, they're just going to siege you up and you're not going to be able to do anything and they're going to siege under your turret. If, the, if your team don't react in time, you're done for and you're going to lose your objective and they're going to keep on ramrodding mid and there's nothing you can do. This is a very, very, very uh, huge thing to take into consideration. Number two, the enemy mid is behind. When the enemy mid is behind, they have wave clear, but that's going to be greatly diminished because of the fact they're behind in gold and experience because they're losing, they're behind. On top of this, your mid is ahead, making the siege even easier. If the enemy mid is behind, it's really, really easy to siege them and actually circumvent wave clear points to a large degree because even if they are wave clear champion when behind they're not going to be able to do it efficiently and if they're mids ahead their mid single handedly could, could kill the other mid your mid could kill theirs but with three people in the lane that's not going to be too much uh, much for the enemy mid to be able to get back into the game again it's just it's pressurizing a lane that isn't doing very well basically and of course it diminishes the wave clear number three you're a siege laner Basically, if your champion is good at sieging, or you're in the bot lane and your support is good at sieging, if your champion has turret dive potential, heavy wave clear, or long range like Caitlyn or Jinx, this means you can easily siege up the mid lane heavily, uh, versus even pretty good decent wave clear. Siege oriented champions should always try and rotate. The main thing I'm saying here is, if they're good at taking turrets, if they're good at sieging out, try to go mid. If you're not a kill lane, basically, try to go mid, because you're not going to be able to patch yourself too heavily. Although, staying in lane is still possible, but it's nice to, 
it's an opportunity basically you can go mid you're gonna do well with that on my caitlin i take bot and go mid immediately that's just me personally though and that's it for the reasons guys i do want to note that these are not the only ways but they are the best ways and of course if you're a kill lane you can go mid uh, with versus a wave clear champion and do pretty well for yourself it's possible i'm not saying it isn't i'm just saying these are the most beneficial times where you're going to be a benefactory of these tactics other than that though i just wanted to mention all of the causality and risks that are cohesive with all of these things and how to minimize and counter them as much as possible i hope it helped so compressed overall roam mid if the enemy mid has no wave clear or is weak or behind and stay bot if you're a kill lane or the mid has wave clear. One last point, can I thank Josh and Mitsu for giving me this fantastic idea on stream, thank you very much. And that's it for the guide guys, if you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it, if you like the content and think it's quality, subscribe and share, if you think it's garbage you can unsub, I am totally fair. Besides this guys, have a great day, and as always, best of luck in the rift.